Hey guys, I'm Chris Black, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks, and this week, how my guitar really sounds. So, here in sunny Berlin, getting ready for the show, doing a little bit of restringing before sound check. Um, I think this is the third to last show of the tour, maybe, um, out of 10 or 11. I've lost track of how many we've done, to be honest. It feels like we've been away a very long time, actually, this time around. I think primarily just because of the nature of the tour involving so much driving from country to country, lots of border controls, carne issues, all this kind of stuff. You know, obviously, as documented with last week's episode as well, the issues with the van being overweight, it's been a fairly kind of uh, hectic tour in that respect, which I guess coupled with the driving just kind of really tires you out. So apologies, I'll probably look a bit mental as well with my hair, but... Um... So just watching this back, just realized that I forgot to mention, I mean, it would be uh, remiss of me not to do so. We're playing in the US this summer, actually, for the first time. We announced a couple of shows recently. We're doing Playing with Fire Festival in Omaha on the 13th of July, the 15th of July. We're playing at the base, or well, we were playing at the basement in Nashville until it sold out in a few hours, so... Keep your eyes peeled, probably sometime this evening, I guess, uh, US time or sometime this morning. I've lost track of where we are for an announcement of an upgrade of a venue. Moving into the basement east, no spoilers here. And then we're playing the Troubadour in Los Angeles as well, which is incredibly cool. I'm really excited. Really excited for all of the shows, but needless to say, as a, as a massive Guns N' Roses fan in particular, the Troubadour is definitely going to be one off the bucket list. So um, anyway, as it were, back to the video. Yeah, I thought this week's episode just... Again, I'm on the road, so I'm kind of limited in what I can do, I guess, at relatively short notice. But we played a, a sold-out show in Zurich a couple of nights ago, and it transpires that we actually record the show from the desk, kind of individual multi-tracks of each individual channel. So I thought it'd be cool for you guys to hear what my guitar sounds like, not only in the context of the mix, which I guess is typically what you hear from week to week, whether that's, you know, kind of stuff that I've recorded at home or whether it's live clips of, you know, the context of the rest of the band, but actually hear what it sounds like in isolation as well. It's... It's always very useful for me to hear it in that um, kind of divide of context situation, I guess, just to hear whether there's things that I'm doing that could be improved on, or whether there's stuff that even tonally could be improved on, whether yeah. there's you know, not enough mids or too many mids, or not, not enough high end, or not enough clarity, or whether it's a little bit sharp, you know. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to play you what, not only my guitar sounds like in isolation, but what my two amps sound like in isolation, both together and individually. Of course, he was in the 4x10 concert, 1961 Fender concert that I bought recently, and my 1966, 67, I can't quite remember. Um, somewhat bastardized Super Reverb, but obviously someone's covered in brown Tolex at some point. So, uh, as I said, I'm somewhat limited with what I can produce on the road, but um, I thought this would be a, an interesting episode as we've not only got great recording of the show, but we've got some uh, cool clips as well to kind of sync that up to. So, um, yeah, let's delve in, see what it sounds like in isolation. I've not listened to this myself yet, so this will be uh, slightly terrifying, I imagine. See how we go. I've got this feeling of grief out. And she said that she don't believe it. I'm going home.
Chrissy Moore.
there you have it. Uh, listening back to that, I guess the, the only kind of obvious take on message from me at the very least is that they'll probably get away with a little bit more treble in my tone. Um, it's fairly mid-heavy, which is not really surprising given that um, all of my overdrive pedals tend to be fairly mid-focused, whether it's the uh, the Mythos Molnia or whether it's the King of Tone, whether it's the, the Black Box that Marshall Bluesbreaker kind of derived. There's a lot of mids going on there, so especially when you stack those, it's of course going to get fairly mid-heavy. The plus side of that being that's what really carries in a mix. Of course, it's going to make your guitar stand out, you know, above the rest of the band for solos and parts. But the downside, at least listening back to that for me, is that I could probably do with a little bit more clarity. So whether that treble or presence comes from the amps or the the pedals, um, I guess remains to be seen. More than likely, it'll be a combination of all of the above. But um, I thought listening back to the two amps and the differences and the nuance between the two amps. Uh, between the speakers as well, of course, in each individual amp. Um, it's interesting, it's very revealing, and it's it's not a particularly natural way to listen to your guitar. Ordinarily, you're not going to stick your ear up to the speakers and see what it sounds like. It's the the experience of listening to a guitar amp more often, not is the ambience of the room, it's the situation, it's the, the context that you're in, it's the band, it's everything that's happening on stage, not what you get if you stick your ear right up to the speaker. Um, it's worth mentioning the microphones on the cabs, or on the speakers that night, were Sennheiser EO9s, I do believe. Um, which is fairly standard when it comes to micing guitar amps, it's typically that or SM57s for most venues, so um, it is probably fairly reflective of how my amp sounds generally, which um, is probably a good barometer or a good starting point to kind of make some adjustments, some subtle adjustments going forward. But um, yeah, there we go. As I said, I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to hear the context or hear the sound devoid of context and with context. Um, just hopefully a little bit of a kind of lesson in making guitars sit in the mix. So. As ever, I'm Chris Buck. We're going to get cracking with soundcheck now, so I'm going to tune out. I'll see you next week. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Back home. Cheers, guys. Take care.